On today's episode of the How Did It Happen podcast, I am channeling Celeste Headley's TED Talk called 10 Ways to Have a Better Conversation. On this one, I'm doing the first five, the first five with my spin on each of them. And those five are don't multitask, don't pontificate, use open-ended questions, go with the flow. And if you don't know, say you don't know. I had a lot of fun doing this. This is part one. I hope you enjoy it. Hey everybody, it's Mike and welcome back to another Friday solo episode of the How Did Happen podcast. Today, I was inspired to talk to you about how to have a better conversation or how to have better conversations. And the inspiration for this came from me listening to Mike Rowe's podcast, The Dirty Jobs Mike Rowe. He's got a wonderful podcast that I listen to almost all the episodes. Definitely worth checking out. But this one, while he was talking to this woman uh, named Celeste Headley, you can learn more about her at uh, her name, CelesteHeadley.com, C-E-L-E-S-T-E-H-E-A-D-L-E-E.com. And Celeste is a journalist at NPR. She's an author. She's a speaker. She's a musician. She's she's a well-rounded uh, person, but she's perhaps best known, at least in the uh, metaverse or in the meta, for a TED Talk that she did probably 10 years ago. Uh, And it's been seen by many, many millions of people. And it was about how to have a better conversation. And of course, she's an expert at having conversations because that's what she does, uh, hosting, um, you know, her NPR show. But I was so, and I was so struck by her uh, and listening to this podcast that I thought to myself, you know, I've been doing this podcast for my own podcast for uh, a little over four years. And I've got almost 400 episodes and I've talked to so many people But one of the things that maybe the most important thing that I've gotten out of being a podcaster, besides the education of listening to all the people that I have the chance to talk with, is really studying how to be a good conversationalist, particularly when it comes to podcasts. And when she, when I heard her talking about her experiences, I thought to myself, well, I've got my own experiences that can probably track along with her, with her TED Talk. So I watched the TED Talk, I took some notes, and now I'm going to, you know, talk about the 10 ways to have a better conversation, which again is her title but I'm going to put my own spin on it from my experience as a podcaster. So if you're, if you're ready for that, here we go. Uh, number one is don't multitask. As you know, there are so many ways to be distracted these days. Like it's very difficult to sit and just, well, you've all been on Zoom calls, right? You know what I mean? It's very difficult to sit and be riveted on a Zoom call or any type of call or any type of conversation uh, without having a desire, at least, to do something else, look at your phone or look at another website, a doodle, you know, whatever. And of course I have that as well. But one of the things that I've learned over time is that when I put all of my distractions out of the way during a podcast, I can only do one thing and that is focus on that conversation. And of course that sounds silly, right? Of course you're, you only need to put away, you know, you put your stuff away and then you don't have the distractions, but it's not just that because once you put yourself your way, you still have your mind going, right? You, you got your stuff away, but you still have your mind going. And it's uh, it can be difficult to not to want to multitask, especially when your brain's telling you like, hey, it's time to multitask. So I put all my stuff away and it. I have to say that uh, the majority of the guests that I have on my show, uh, I think also follow the multitask rule, but it's very obvious when and they aren't doing that because even with notifications off and all that, you can definitely tell when someone d- decides that they're going to look at an email or they're going to look at their phone or they're going to do something along. It's usually those two things, something along those lines. And it takes away. It takes away their attention and it, it disrupts me as I'm watching them. So what I try to do in addition to putting my stuff away is I try to lean in. I try to lean into the conversation and I am always taking notes because I find that if I'm leaning in, if you're watching me, you can see I'm getting closer to the mic. If I'm leaning in, it's like a listening posture. And if I'm taking notes, it's a reinforcement that I'm reinforcing with my own writing what that person is saying and and why it's important to me. So that's number one of the 10 ways to have a better conversation. Don't multitask. Number two, don't pontificate. Pontification is boring to me, at least. It's boring. I think it is to most most listeners, unless you're like 
you know, listening to a political speech or something like that, where people sort of have to pontificate because they're asking you for their vote or they're trying to distinguish themselves in a in a in a demonstrable way from someone else, usually not by distinguishing themselves, but by putting the other person down. It just pontificating just gets boring. It's like we're not having a conversation anymore. You're just blabbing. And we all have a we all have a tendency to do this. Uh I have a tendency not a tendency. I shouldn't say we all have a tendency. We all can do it from time to time. It's like a natural thing. Like I want to say what's on my mind. And I just feel like it goes much better uh, in a conversation if if we don't come into it thinking that we have something that is more important to say than rolling, say, with the conversation. So number two, don't pontificate. Number three, use open-ended questions. You've learned that uh, you learned that in school, I'm sure. Uh, you've probably learned that at home with your family. When you ask yes or no questions, you have boring conversations or easy outs for one another, and it's not very interesting. When you use open-ended questions, in other words, questions that can't be answered with a yes or no, typically, that's how I define an open-ended question. They start with who, what, why, when, where, how, and you're not leading someone to something. You're just opening the door for someone to uh, walk into. And I find that when I'm able to do that and when we're able to do that, it leads to a much more interesting conversation. You get a lot more out of it than you otherwise would. So number four is go with the flow. Go with the flow. So if you listen to my po- my long form podcasts, I start every podcast with the same simple question, and that is, "How did it happen for you?" I do that, and it's the only the, it's the only question that I ask every single person is, "How did it happen for you?" And I do that because it's such an interesting question. But what it does is it leads to a lot of very interesting answers because I'm not trying to lead anybody anywhere. And when people ask me, "What are you looking for?" you know, from the question, I've heard you ask the question. I said, "I'm not looking for anything." I'm looking for whatever it is you want to tell about yourself as it relates to how whatever it is happened for you. And then after that, I have no questions. I have ideas that I write down and I have in front of me. I have certain facts that I have in front of me about the person, but I have no other questions. And the reason for that is uh, I don't, I never know how someone is going to answer the how did it happen question. And I can't think of a time when their answer hasn't led to the next question that would never have been the question that I would have come up with if I was scripting out questions. So uh, I just go with the flow. I go with the flow of the conversation and hopefully, and I get some, my, my, my wife will tell me sometimes you should have followed up with this. And I'm like, Oh, Right. And I took it in a different direction. But um, regardless, I am always going with the flow. I'm always trying to figure out what's the next appropriate question based on what that person has just told me. And sometimes it probably seems like the very natural next question to ask. And other times it's not. It's something way different. So go with the flow. If you come into a conversation or an interview and you've got all your questions down and you want to make sure you ask those five questions or those 10 questions, I can tell you for sure that your interview or conversation is going to be more boring than it would have been if you just went with the flow. And number five, if you don't know, say you don't know. The three words that I would be very, very, very nervous using early in my career were I don't know because I felt like it reflected poorly on me if I didn't know something. Now, as I'm a bit more mature and now as I've had these conversations with so many people, I couldn't possibly know everything that they're talking about. I feel very, very comfortable saying, I don't know. And I think it's powerful too, because when I admit that I don't know something, um, not only do I get, you know, people naturally want to fill in and explain to you what you don't know, but also I think it, it takes down a wall for them too, because when you're you know, they're meeting, most people are meeting me for the first time. They don't know who I am. They don't know what I'm about and they want to look good. Right. So admitting that you don't know something might not feel all that comfortable. And when I admit that I don't know something first, I think that it takes like kind of deflates the pressure a little bit. Right. So that we can all kind of be ourselves and not be so hung up on what we do know or what we don't know. 
So I'm going to stop this episode at five because I like to keep these around 10 minutes or so. And I'll do a part two with six through 10 of the 10 ways to have a better conversation. And I do thank you for investing your time and energy in me and in this podcast. And I hope you've gotten a positive return on that investment today. If you did, please consider subscribing or following the podcast so that every episode comes directly to your feed automatically. And feel free to share the episode too. Maybe someone you know will get something positive out of this, or you maybe you know a podcaster or someone that just likes to have good conversations that's always looking for a tip or two on how to do that better. So until next time, maximize your greatness and make your future your property, a property that you are proud to own. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the show. And before you go, I just have three requests for you. One, if you like what I'm doing, please consider subscribing or following the podcast on whatever podcast platform you prefer. If you're really into it, leave me a review, write something nice about me, give me five stars or whatever you feel is most appropriate. Number two, I've got a book. It's called Ownership, How Getting Selfish Got Me Unstuck. It's an Amazon bestseller. And I'd love for you to read it or listen to it on Audible or wherever else, Barnes and Noble, Amazon, you can get it everywhere. If you're looking for inspiration that will help you unlock your greatness and potential, order or download it today so that you can have your very own copy. And if you get it, please let me know what you think. Number three, my newsletter. I do a newsletter every Thursday and I talk about things that are interesting to me and or I give more information about the podcast and the podcast guests that I've had and the experiences that I've had with them. You can sign up for the podcast today at my website, which is my name, MikeMalatesta.com. You do that right now, put in your email address and you'll get the very next issue. The newsletter is short, thoughtful, and designed to inspire, activate, and maximize the greatness in you.